Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today, we are going to look take take a look at episode four of the Bad Batch. Okay, so this was a fun episode. I know it's a little late. I know episode five has already come out, but I've only I've only caught up to episode four just far. So. What are we looking at here? This was a really fun episode. Again, like all Cl Clone Wars Bad Batch episodes, the premise is very simple. So you, you have the ship, the ship is broken, the ship needs parts, the ship lands to get repairs. So, and adventures happen while they're doing that. That's a slightly different version from the episode 3, but pretty basic format. Now this episode is mostly about character development, but before we get into the spoilers, go check out my book at my links below, Humans Are Weird. I have the data available on Amazon, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, and Google Books. So here we get into the spoilers. Now this episode again is fairly simple. Ship needs X done to it until they can go to a place Y. There's some conflict between the the older clones of the Bad Batch who want to lie low and hide, and be, and Omega, who is really getting the feel of how big the universe is and wants to explore some of it, but they're on the run from the Empire now. So they stop on Pantora. Now, fun fact, this is one of the named planets that I do know only because of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Because of his general physical appearance, he looks almost like a Pantoran. P people often describe him as a P Pantoran with an eye condition. So that's how I know this planet. Anyway, and in the books, it was, it was, nobody was ever surprised to find a Pantoran working for the Empire. So it makes sense that it was one of the more enthusiastic planets. So anyway, they land, things go wrong, they have adventures, you have some subplots, there's a lot of character development. But mostly what I want to focus on is Wrecker's character development. Because a lot of people complain that he was the most cookie cutter of all of the cookie cutter characters at the beginning of the series. He was the strong one, the tough one, the muscle, genetically engineered to be stronger. And yet we're getting more and more glimpses at him. And he's actually turning out to be a very well-rounded character when you start adding up everything we know about him. He's not heavily specialized in any, te in any te uh, te technology or specific skill set, but he is clearly not an idiot. He is showing, we see these glimpses of his intelligence below the bluff charge and his personality is part one of his weapons. He wants people to underestimate him. Then he goes in and displays his strength. But look at his interactions with Omega. He's the, he was one of the first ones to recognize when they were scaring her. He was doing his act, panicking, making a lot of noise when the ship was crashing in a previous episode until he saw that he was truly frightening Omega. And that was not the reaction he was going for. So he immediately and tried to do it smoothly, but it fails because he's not used to this yet, shifted his emotional output. He changed his a behavior that he's had his entire life to make Omega more comfortable. And then he gets down on this planet, and again, he shows himself, if he's almost more in tune with Omega's emotions than Hunter is. He's definitely better at in just instinctively comforting her. And you can, that's when you can actually see the wheels turning behind his one good eye, when it, whenever he's act, interacting with Omega. And also, and probably, and very importantly, from a sign of intelligence, he knows what his limitations are. And he is able to communicate those limitations to his brothers. When Tech is trying to get him to help repair the ship, Tech starts to make this long list of technical speech, and Record just says, just tell me what I need to rip out. Wrecker's not ashamed that he has lower technological skills than his brother, and he is able to communicate what his limits are and get his brother to work within those limits. That's a pretty high level of intelligence, and I think as time goes on, we're going to see that they are these, these boys are a family. Not one of them is over 15 years old at this point. They are, they are very much brothers, and in a family, you expand or contract your personality to fit within that family. It happens unconsciously. You're, you're each, try to, each child find, tries to find their own niche. And it was never Wrecker's niche to think about anything. He just went where his brother pointed and punched things. Now though, when they're out in the big world, they're adults now, they're having to s expand out into full adult characters. And oddly enough, we are seeing that the most with Wrecker. With Tech, who has to deal with his technology, it, to become a full adult 
to go from a child's tech specialist to an adult tech, tech specialist isn't that big of an outward change. It's not something you can follow and see. Hunter was already very mature from having to be the leader. And Echo tra trained into the Jedis and was already pretty much fully an adult by the time he found them. So it's record that we're getting to experience this act of putting aside your own selfish desires and your need to express yourself at the cost of the peace around you and growing up and learning to restrain your emotions and express them in the most productive way and to express yourself in the most productive way for your family. And it's just, it's really fascinating to me that we're getting to see that growth process through Wrecker. On another side note about his interactions with Omega, Omega is so well written in these episodes. Very intelligent, very precocious, and very just childlike. It's, she's not unbelievable. When Wrecker finds her and she jumps into his arm and he hugs her, that little cry she gives and the I want to go home thing she says. That is so, just so beautiful. And then, of course, you know, there's the big, uh, I don't know, plot twist spoiler that the, the new character that shows up, that was cool. They brought her in in a very logical way. And I, I really like how they developed her, the bounty hunter's character. Because yes, you can't just go killing everybody who offends you if you want to maintain business relationships. That is a very astute business-minded bounty hunter there. And of course, this being an A-team type story arc at the point, they rescue everybody, get off the planet, they, they get what they need, get off the planet, and they limp along to the next adventure. So those are my thoughts on it. What do you think? Do you think we're seeing more development in Hunter or Wrecker as they go from being the emotionally stunted child soldiers that the Republic and the Kaminoans and the Jedi made them to be? Or are we looking, who, who, do, you who do you think is doing it better? All right, that's my short, sweet review of the fourth, ch the fourth chapter in the Bad Batch Saga. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out the links below my video to check out Humans Are Weird. I have the data. Star Trek meets Monty Python in this book of human absurdity. Peace out, my wonderful viewers. The book from author Betty Adams, Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data, is a humorous look at human behavior through the eyes of aliens. This book is arranged in separate reports or essays, documenting the experiences with humanity through the lens of the aliens who have to interact with them. This anthology of short stories and vignettes from alien points of view highlights some of humanity's quirks we can all relate to. Author Betty Adams captures how strange and interesting humans can really be. This is a fun collection of stories you will really get a kick out of. Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data from author Betty Adams. Order your copy right now on Amazon.